Jesus said, follow me. And a young millennial responded by saying, but I'm not on Twitter. I speak to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. This past uh, Tuesday, after Bible study, I'd made my way up to uh, Bloor and uh, Dufferin to, uh, to go to the subway station, and there was a street on the corner. He was uh, a big man, he had a big, big uh, uh, speaker, he had a big voice, and he had big things to say. He was asking people to repent and to turn to the Lord. It's fine. It's fine. I have to admit that uh, I don't know about you, but I generally react negatively to that kind of, that kind of thing. 75% of me just does not like that sort of lack of context and lack of relationship. And it tends to be all about the negative sides of life and that you're evil sinners and all that sort of thing. So I say 75% of me just does not like that sort of thing whatsoever. Is anyone in the same place? Or am I just, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. However, 25% of me says I admire someone who can stand on a corner and proclaim his faith or her faith. I wish they did it a different way, but I do admire them. Perhaps the inspiration for that kind of preaching, that kind of standing on a street corner, perhaps the inspiration comes from today's Gospel lesson, where Jesus talks about the mission of his people. And so today I'm just going to break a rule, a preaching rule, and answer four questions for us. The preaching rule I'm breaking, by the way, is that there's only supposed to be three questions in any good sermon. But I just couldn't stop at three because there was four things I wanted to say. These four questions are this. One, what was Jesus' mission? Two, what is the church's mission? Three, what is St. Anne's mission? And the rule breaking, breaking four, what is your mission? What is Jesus' mission? If we are to take it from the context of the Gospel lesson that we just heard read, we understand that Jesus' mission was to proclaim the Kingdom of God. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus makes it very clear what it is that he is setting out to do. And earlier in the Gospel, in Luke chapter 4, Jesus announces that he is here to fulfill scripture, that he is here to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, that he is here to heal the blind, heal the sick, and bring about a reign of justice. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is very clear about what his mission is. His mission is about justice and healing. In today's Gospel, we see something else. Jesus has made it clear to his 12 apostles that his Gospel, his teaching, his reason, his mission is to proclaim healing and justice, as I've said. But now he extends that mission beyond the 12 apostles that follow him day by day to a group of 70 or more. And it's interesting because it's not apparent in this passage, but this group of 70 or more, these would be sort of second tier followers if you want, not worth less than the apostles, but just a sort of a more outer circle, not part of the inner circle. These 70 plus people include women and men. It's very clear in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus was sending out women to proclaim the kingdom. Jesus sends them out and he gives them all those detailed instructions, instructions that we just heard read. But the point for me is that these people, these 70, is an expansion 
of Jesus' mission. He's moved it from 12, that he's particularly tutoring, to a group of 70 or more that are proclaiming the kingdom of God, proclaiming justice, proclaiming peace, as we see in the passage, proclaiming the goodness of God and the kingdom of God. So when answering the question, what is Jesus' mission? It's twofold. One is to proclaim justice in the kingdom of God and peace. The second is to invite others into that very same ministry, that very same mission. Question two, what is the church's mission? And I'm talking big C church here, the global church, the church around the world. What is the church's mission? Well, it shifted after life, death, and resurrection. In the Acts of the Apostles, which are the stories of Jesus, uh, of the coming of the Holy Spirit, right after Jesus' resurrection. In the Acts of the Apostles, there was a shift and the church sort of slightly included something else to proclaim. And that something else to proclaim was Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. His death on the cross was seen as a moment, so it's kind of a continuation, if you want, of what Jesus was calling and sending his disciples and that group of 70 out to do. It was also about healing. And a kind of healing in the fact that our sins are forgiven. And a kind of healing in that not all is lost, there is new life. Christ has rose, alleluia. And the church's focus moves slightly from not only healing and proclaiming the kingdom of God, but also proclaiming Jesus' death and resurrection. What is the church's mission? The church's mission is Jesus' original mission. And now the church's mission is also to proclaim Jesus as Savior who has died on the cross and who has rose again, risen again. Let's make it personal. There's no point looking at Scripture if it doesn't become personal. So let's ask the question, what is Anne's mission? Well, if we're followers of Jesus, it's the same thing. If we're followers of Jesus, it's about proclaiming the kingdom of God. It's about proclaiming healing. It's about proclaiming and doing justice. Those things which St. Anne's does well. But I know that this is perhaps true for St. Anne's. It's perhaps true for many Anglican churches, many nations across the nation. Is that in an era of decline, we begin to get worried and we lose focus, if you want. We start worrying if our church, our St. Anne's, is going to continue. This glorious building, the glorious choir, the eh, okay, preaching. The church, St. Anne's, is about remembering over and over again, especially when we get worried is about proclaiming justice, proclaiming healing, and proclaiming the kingdom of God. And as the expansion of Jesus moved from the 12 to the 70, it's also an expansion of my role. It's not just Father Don's role. It's the role of all of us. And so perhaps this passage today is calling us to refocus and remember what it is to follow Jesus. And let's make it personal. What is your mission? 
as someone who is newly retired, and I seem to have a bunch of friends who are newly retired, we're all kind of sort of trying to figure it out. What, what are we doing now? I used to run to dawn. <laughs> but it's my privilege and pleasure to do that. And he invited me to be here, and I'm delighted. So I begin to realize that part of my mission, my personal mission now, has shifted, has changed. I don't run churches anymore. But my role is a supporting role. And when it comes to following Jesus, what is your mission? And only you can answer that. But just as Jesus included everyone into his mission of proclamation of justice, his proclamation of healing, his proclamation of that being the very kingdom of God, is there a spot, is there a place where you can say, I can join in. I can do something. I too can proclaim the kingdom of God. Jesus said, follow me. And the people of Anne, St. Anne's said, okay. Amen.